Hey. All right, so I figured we'll show you how we're uh, rolling patterned wire here. So this is basically how uh, patterned wire for jewelry uh, has been done for de like about a century. So you have your pattern roll up here at the top. You have the receiving roll here at the bottom. You cut your material to size and run it through and it embosses it. This was carved sometime in the 1930s by the Cranston Fancy Wire Company. This was a hyper-localized trade out in Rhode Island. So this is an 1888 H. Flugel pattern mill. Been in continuous work for 135 years. If you look along here, this is a pattern library. Most of the good rolls are a little bit further to the left over here. Mm -hmm. So there's about 10,000, we estimate, in the pattern archive, uh, consisting of four different roll companies that used to exist. Um, and the, the patterns date from about 1870 all the way up into the 1960s. And yeah, they would have been used for all sorts of things, bracelets. Uh, I have a good example here. So this is the bracelet, this is the die. So this was done around 1939 by the Millard Wire Company. And this is the finished piece. So you can see how this is used to make jewelry. So we're the last people in the United States doing this. Um, at one time the Cranston Fancy Wire Company employed around 100 people and had we're pumping out miles and miles of wire, but uh, we sell direct to like individual artists and jewelers now, and we're running on all 19th century equipment. This is an agate roller, so you have your two patterns match up here, and then you can decorate like the edge of a dinner tray or vanity tray different stuff. Just breaking down wire here. Yeah, more rolls, <laughs> lots of them. Um, so I change out the available patterns every month because I can't keep a consistent catalog of 10,000 in stock all the time. It's just me. Um, so I offer everything in copper, brass, and silver, five patterns a month, and they change out. But I'll also like release stuff in the middle of the month. And yeah, we're it.